Not only have you served as president of the Philosophy of Education Society, the American Educational Studies Association, and the American Educational Research Association, in 1984 you were the first female president in 31 years, is that right? Mm. You've served as the editor of Teachers College Record for seven years. You have achieved Educator of the Year awards. I was very busy, was You I? are. <laughs> Medals of Honor, Scholarly and Lifetime Achievement Awards. You have nine honorary degrees from universities across the country. And you were elected as a member of the National Academy of Education, mm -hmm. hence why we're honoring you today with the Inside the Academy interview. What haven't you accomplished in your life that you would still like to achieve? What haven't I accomplished? Mm -hmm. That you still I, want to I achieve? Feel, even as I hear that, that I didn't accomplish much, you know, that uh, accomplishment would be opening up more and more people to the world, teaching. I, I think I didn't ever teach in a, a poor public school. Uh, you know, I think I should have at some time in my life, that I was privileged I, that I taught in good schools, you know. I never taught in a Harlem school, for example, and I should have to, to really feel I was contributing. I've been there, I've do, but I realized, I think you said somehow, because uh, you went, you saw a lot of those schools, and he saw the difficulty, and every time he talked about it, I asked myself, could I manage that? You know, could I manage a school with the unhappy children or poor children or children who didn't know why they were in school? Sure. And I don't know. If, if I had achieved more, I would have known more <laughs> and maybe done more in schools like that, but I didn't. So that's your teacher as stranger yeah. applying to yourself mm. that you would have liked to do that, become a stranger right. in that environment. And I think I was, you know, to, to be a, a public school teacher, to get the certification, to manage the bureaucracy, I think I was afraid of that. And I, so I didn't do it. I should have done it. Mm. You, you were a teacher. You I was are a teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. In high school? Uh, middle school and high school and mm. now college. Yeah, but also inner city as well. Is it a hard school to teach? It was very difficult, yes. But that's inspired me to, yeah. to but enough about me, this is about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, also in celebration of your 90th birthday, Dr. James M. Giarelli at Rutgers University wrote of your ambition as a young woman to have wanted to write a novel by the age of 20. He argue, argues that you were ultimately successful in that you have crafted your novel like literary critic Leo Lerman by writing your life's novel your whole life. If you could revise or rewrite a chapter in your life's novel, what would it be? I probably would have waited longer to write a novel. <laughs> I wrote, uh, uh, I wrote novels before I was really ready to do it, but I know I always wished I would write a novel before I was 16. <laughs> and, and I realize now I didn't know enough. I didn't know about sex. I didn't know about relationship. I wish sure. I did. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, I'm reading a book that got such high uh, uh, reputation. It's called Freedom, you know, and I don't like it. I don't like novels that stay on the surface of things. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to write like a Russian novel. I would like to be a Dostoevsky, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I'm a Jewish girl from New York. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is a series of introspective questions for you. The first one, who most helped you become the person you are today? I had to choose myself somehow. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I had a teacher in high school who inspired me, a French teacher. Uh, but, and, and I've had some friends, but I don't think I could, I could talk about anybody who, uh, 
who really helped me. I wanted to rebel, and I needed rebellious friends. <laughs> and like, for example, uh, it doesn't seem to connect, but among the uh, happiest times of my life were during the, like the Civil Rights Movement and the Vietnam War, and going to demonstrations and organizing demonstrations. Those were my big moments, <laughs> strangely enough. I liked being part of a, of, a, of a mass that had ideals, I think. Doesn't exist now so much. Not so much, not like then. I should have gone to Washington to hear, a, you know, John, John so-and-so. And, uh, you know, the other day they had a big conference on against inanity. I, uh, John, the one on The Daily Show. Uh, Doesn't matter. John Stewart? <laughs> no, The Daily Show. John Stewart. John Stewart. John Stewart. Yes, yes. Stewart, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I would like to be part of something big again. <laughs> what inspires you? What inspired me? What inspires you? Just you. What continues to inspire you? I want. Uh, I wanted to be part of what was uh, moving ahead, what was progressive. And at the same time, I, I used to go to a, a place called Highlander, Highlander down in Tennessee. And the man who, who uh, started it was a, a very sort of wonderful man who believed in bringing people together to sing together. And he was being interviewed by Bill Moyers one time. Mm. And Bill Moyers said, what is, who is your favorite poet? And this sort of farmer type man said, Percy Bysshe Shelley. So everybody was surprised. He said, why Shelley? Because he believed in freedom, he mm. said. And that always moved me very much. And I used to go with some of his people uh, uh, to work with groups who wanted to, uh, like they wanted to have a school lunch program and they got together. And I sometimes went with those. I like that kind of activity. Mm. It sounds sort of stupid, but anyways. No, it doesn't at all. What do you find uninspiring? What? What do you find uninspiring? What doesn't inspire you? It's uninspiring. What don't I like? Yeah. Like what? A lot of popular culture I don't like. Popular culture. Like uh, I don't understand how people can look at uh, uh, at situation comedy on t on teachers college, mm -hmm. a teachers college. I mean, yeah, on television. television. Mm -hmm. I, I like uh, uh, I, I like to acknowledge when stuff is dull and doesn't really touch hum the human condition, which sounds very elitist. But uh, at the same time, I can. Uh, I, I wouldn't listen to a lot of what's on television. Mm. I look at the program, eh, who cares, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And I would like, to, as I said, I would like kids to understand enough to be critical of what's on television, what they see all the time. As mm -hmm. consumers. Do you have children? I do. How, how many? Two, six and seven, little ones. But they're very, they look at television a lot. Not so much. No, we, that's yeah, good. Sometimes. That's Certain shows. Like SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. But that's <laughs> what is your favorite word? What? What is your favorite word? My favorite word? Mm -hmm. Word. Word. Mm -hmm. Reflection or passion or both? Mm -hmm. that's your passion, life. I think. <laughs> Sounds like an opera. <laughs> what profession, other than your own, would you have liked to attempt? Would I not like? No, would you have liked to attempt? Oh. Something different. What would you have liked to be? I'd like to be a playwright or, a, or an actress. <laughs> really? I think so. Uh, impossible, but I think that. Is it impossible? <laughs> What profession other than your own would you not like to have attempted? That I would not like. Right. Uh, 
I would want to run a, depart, a department store or be a buyer, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to be a scientist. I'm too dumb. Oh. I wouldn't know how to be a physicist or anything like that. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. You're uh, <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Oh, there's so many. It's right right here, now, right? The Lives of Others and Brokeback Mountain. And Brokeback Mountain. Mm -hmm. Why those two? Let me see. Brokeback Mountain was such a, a sort of wonderful expose of the killing effect of convention. You know, how people sure. would give up who they really are to be accepted. I may not remember it all together, but I remember I thought it was wonderful. And the lives of others, uh, it, first of all, it raises a real question. How do you know others? How do you know the lives of others? And uh, and it, it and also it's very uh, you know it's partly in the Nazi period yes and you know how people struggle against uh, the try to find what it is to be in good faith I, I like that I could think of others <laughs> that's no I agree that's an yeah. excellent movie what is your favorite book oh I can't say I could say Bobby Dick I could say. Anna Karenina, I could say, Under the Volcano, I could say, uh, uh, a lot of Hemingway. I used to love Hemingway. Now I know I'm not supposed to love him, but I love And Camus, The Stranger. Uh, so I, can't, I have to say they're all my favorites. They're all your favorites. What about since we're in New York, what's your favorite Broadway? I wish, I wish I could see more. Oh, sure. Oh. There's so many that were so important, like the Shakespeare plays, sure. or Equus, I remember, or uh, the one now I want to see, the Pittman uh, uh, artist, uh, the, the theater called Red, about, yes. uh, um, you know, the painter uh, who, who painted all red. There are a lot of things, but I don't go as often as I would like to have to hire a good van to take me. <laughs> sure. Do you go to theater much? Just here, just in New York. Mm -hmm. But you're very fortunate to, the, to live here. It's a wonderful yeah. city. If you could tell President Obama one thing, what would it be? I, I should fight off those power men, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. or be realistic and don't be, uh, uh, don't have fantasies about how you could build a new world. I, I feel sorry for him in a way that uh, maybe not, but that he had such expectations, we all did, such mm -hmm. hope. But this is a, a capitalist country, a money mad country, a country covered, uh, filled with fraud and dishonesty. So he has a you know how do you how do you deal with all that? Mm -hmm. I loved his books. I loved the um, the person that is behind those books, but it's too much. It's mm -hmm. too much to deal with. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine wanting to be president. Can you? Mm -mm. No, that might be one career that you would not have liked to attempt. What are your thoughts about um, his educational policies? I don't like them because mm -hmm. he. Uh, he doesn't uh, really support public schools. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what, do you, what do you call those schools again? Charter? Charter mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. He's very much for charter schools. Mm -hmm. And I think even though charter schools can be good schools, they can be also dominated by a business ethic. You know, you can have hedge fund people opening charter schools, mm -hmm. and I don't trust them. Mm -mm. So it's, uh, I wish, uh, I mean, I would like a real support for public schools in the old tradition. P schools that uh, are ready to educate every child, no matter who, and schools that uh, are aware of uh, the public, of the public space, that are uh, aware of what it is to become a, a decent citizen, to, mm -hmm. to become aware of democracy. I don't think that happens now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Unless it's on the test. That's right. Anyway, am I finished? Almost. We have three more questions. Mm -hmm. Are you doing okay? 
You're okay? Okay. Okay. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? What? If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I was going to say Vanessa Redgrave. <laughs> 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 or, uh, <laughs> Or Joan Didion or something. Mm -hmm. Did you mean a writer or an artist? Anybody. It anybody. could be anybody, dead or alive, that you'd like to have breakfast uh, or lunch with. I, was th I can't think of his name. He's a, a, a well-known African-American thinker and philosopher. West. What's his first name? Cornell West. Yeah. Cornell West. I'd like that kind of uh, understandable philosophy. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being that. And then uh, before she died, and even today, I'm an enormous admirer of Hannah Arendt. I would like to know as much as she knew. Oh. If heaven exists, what would you oh, like oh. to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly <laughs> gates? At the gate. At the gates. Mm. I'd like them to say, here she comes, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> we have a rebel. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. In fact, I had a dream about that the other night. I'm not sure why. You know, the gate and, and an old man in a white dress, huh. <laughs> St. <Saint> Peter. St. <laughs> <Saint> Peter. <laughs> and what did he say? Uh, I don't think he, he said, you'll have to wait. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. What are your words of wisdom for graduate students aspiring to be people just like you? I'd, um, I, I, I guess I'd say, whatever you do, be true to yourself. Let it come out of your own experience. And as your own experience connects with the culture, with the world's experience, uh, and don't be afraid of being, uh, of being, uh, let's see, don't be afraid of being committed to a particular idea. Don't give it up because you want to make an impression at the college, you know. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's still a lot to do to, uh, to have commitment rule education and not consumerism. Mm -hmm. I feel stupid and have nothing more to say. No, no, that's yeah. perfect. When asked to capture the essence of Maxine Green, your friend Janet Miller wrote, Maxine's is a life totally devoted to questioning how we all can fight the plagues of indifference, ignorance, and apathy, both in our schools and on the streets where we live. Maxine is magnificent. Oh. <laughs> And she never shies away from questioning her own commitments, her own constructions of meaning in relation to others, her own understandings of the world. Maxine is a gift to the world. Your sister and Michelle Fine note that at the end of pretty much everything you do, you say or you whisper, was that okay? <laughs> is that right? Yeah. So we're at the end of the interview. Was that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It was so much, such a pleasure getting to meet you and thank you so much for being you our guest. You very nice and I wish I was better. <laughs> thank Wonderful. you very much.